who's it for? That's a nice beat. See, you said the magic word. He entertained in a variety of ways for decades, and now tributes to Dick Clark are pouring in from around the world. He died today of a heart attack at the age of 82. Welcome back. I'm Sylvia Lopez. And I'm Rob Schmidt in for Lena Wynn today. Dick Clark has fans that span generations from American Bandstand to his New Year's Rockin' Eve. He made people stars overnight with just one appearance on his show. And here now to talk about Dick Clark's impact on the entertainment industry is Hollywood insider Jeannie Wolf. Jeannie, welcome so much and thank you thank for being you. here with us. You know, everyone's saying all day that Dick Clark was the world's oldest teenager. <laughs> I, I'm going to change that. He, he remained a young teenager. He, he was mind. very young. You know, um, so much to say about Dick Clark, but but one thing that we were just talking about was he was way ahead of his times in how he saw the demographics of this country and who he, the markets were. He was a great showman, you know, in the old-fashioned sense. He could do anything, but he also was a visionary. So he started this show, American Bandstand, and then he went to the network and said we should be national. And they said, a kid's show? <laughs> with, right. You know, with kid's music? Right. And practically laughed him out of the office. Wow. When you think about it now, everything is marketed to right. the kids. And in those days, I can just see the executives go, yeah, teenagers are really <laughs> going to buy soap and toothpaste. <laughs> yeah, they're going right. to buy washing machines. Right. But he, the other thing was, I, I don't know about you, I remember on Saturdays, I would stand in front of the set and try to copy those moves so I could Absolutely. be, I, I, I really learned how to dance, right. sure. you know, from watching that sure. show, and, you know, tried to look like it. Yeah. <laughs> how to dress too. But you, oh. exactly, but as the fashions changed and the kids are always fashion forward, even then, you know, they're, they're Dick Clark never picked up on the fads. He appreciated, you know, all the music and all the costumes, but he's, he stayed steady, mm. and there were people who just said, you know, he's got to have a picture in the attic. <laughs> <laughs> no one's skin stays, stays so smooth. No one, no one you know, that. keeps yeah. that, that smile. He really was, he was really special. You, you could just meet him for a minute. Sure. I mean, I, I've met him many, many, many times, but you could meet him for a minute, and you'd think, gee, I know Dick Clark. You wouldn't come away saying, I, That's I exactly, met Dick Clark. <laughs> That's what I wanted to ask you, is that everybody, you know, almost... Everybody in this country knows the face and, and recognizes him from seeing him on television for, you know, 40, 50 years, 60 years. Very few people actually got to know him in person, got to meet him and spend some time with him like you did. And, you know, people in, in, in our business tend to have their personality on the air, and some people are very different when they're off the air. What about Dick Clark? Oh, I would say he was very similar off the air and on the air, except for one thing. He was a great producer. So oh. you wouldn't see the part where there was one year when the Golden Globes what award show runs short? <laughs> there was right. one year right. that toward the end of the show, they were going to have to fill seven or eight minutes. I watched all the other people backstage, nervous. What are we going to do? Dick Clark came backstage, interviewed press, called in some of the stars, cool as a cucumber, and putting people in their place. So wow. You didn't see that producer take charge side of him as much. You know, besides running home for American Bandstand, I have to confess that my husband and I, even if we were out at a party New Year's Eve, I would say we have to leave. I like to come home and watch right. Dick Clark oh, yeah, bring in the New Year's. Sure. How Absolutely. Cool do you it wouldn't be New Year's without it. You know, I was really surprised to hear that he didn't actually create Bandstand. He, he joined a few years later. And yet, um, and perhaps this is his greatest legacy, it seems like no one else would it have been able to sell it like he sold it because of his image and sold the music and sold the artists and sold the diversity and of that the music? The diversity, at that, you know, we forget at those times to, to, to mix, you know, black artists, artists of color with white artists. Right. He took a lot of chances as much as they would let him. Right. You know, what they, they, they would let it, they, they were very, very careful. Right. But, you know, Stevie Wonder. Absolutely. You know, said he was on the show when he was 13. And uh, <laughs> my favorite is that Madonna was on his show. And, you know, Dick would be very serious about people's music. And she, she was introduced on his show. And he said, what do you see in your future? What do you want to do? And she said, take over the world. <laughs> <laughs> and I think she did. Absolutely. <laughs> she left oh. a piece for Dick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jeannie, oh, thank you so much. Jeannie we appreciate it. Appreciate your stories, too, Jeannie. Okay. Thanks.